In 2005, Pandemic made the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. That's what people were expecting when EA announced they were going to make a Battlefront game. When Disney closed down LucasArts and gave the a Star Wars license to EA. That's what they were expecting. Now, EA produced a game that visually and sound-wise was basically nailed the look of the classic Star Wars films. They nailed it. They did a perfect job. But gameplay-wise, it was nothing like the original Battlefront 2. Now, when Battlefront launched, the game aesthetically had the look feel and sound of Star Wars, but it lacked all the bells and whistles of Battlefront 2. It lacked the heroes, it lacked the game modes, it lacked basically all the content, and a lot of people complained that it was dumbed down for to make it appeal to the widest possible audience. They were expecting classic Battlefront 2, but with better graphics. Now. And the game that also didn't have a single player campaign. Now, Battlefront 2, the game that they recently released, that was meant to make up for that. It had a single player campaign that was canon to the films, and it had new content, it had content from the Civil War, content from the Clone Wars, and new heroes, and they're considering bringing in Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ahsoka and, uh, and other characters and then they had to go and sabotage it with their business practices. The game did sell well and there are people playing it but it created a massive backlash that is still ongoing and we still need to talk about it we still need to keep the dialogue going. The problem with EA is they're a corporation. And with corporations, they're beholden to their investors first, customers second, sometimes even customers last, depending on the corporation. So they are beholden to them first, and they're beholden to Wall Street. And Wall Street wants these microtransactions. They want these business practices in, in place because they make a lot of money. The problem is these business practices take advantage of people who are addicted to gambling, who are addicted to microtransactions, and that's caused a great deal of controversy and it's awakened the player community in a way I've never seen before. They've, they've been mad at EA before, but nothing like this. They've, they're finally fed up with just being used as money machines. There's a way to stop a lot of things that are happening. To stop the legislation that could be passed by several states, six states in fact, working to ban the sale of games with gambling features in them to anyone under 21. And some countries want to ban uh, loot boxes entirely. But there's a way to stop it. The ESRB has the power to police the gaming industry. They were formed because of another controversy in the past due to content in games. So they have the authority given to them by the gaming industry themselves to dictate ratings for games that have specific content. But since they are basically controlled by the big corporate studios, they're not doing their job. And they need to be policing the industry, and they're not. So, they have a choice to make. They either police the industry the way they're supposed to, or they force the industry to basically accept whatever legislation gets passed. And probably end up fighting that legislation in court and wasting millions of dollars doing so, millions of dollars that could have been spent on making good, better games, and thus hurting the gaming industry even further than they already are. That's basically where they're at. 
That's the fight that they are picking right now. And it's one that I think ultimately they're going to lose. Are you sick of all the drama in gaming social media? Then come on over to the official Gamers Bay community in Google+. We're a fun, safe, and drama-free community. Links are found in the video description. If you like this video, please like, favorite, and subscribe. Also, here's a couple other videos you might find interesting.